Hello and welcome to Let's Challenge. Today I'm continuing the Super Castlevania 4 Leather Whip Challenge with Stage 3. I've been doing it one stage at a time. And you can see here we already have some bats flying in. I've decided I'm going to point out when bats appear the first time in the stage. Because I said in a previous video I think there's a bat in every stage. So if I go ahead and uh, just call out the bats, then we can actually see if I'm correct or not. And I was actually thinking through the game in my head the other day, and from what I can remember, I remember for sure there's a bat in every stage except for the clock tower. Um, the clock tower is the only stage that I can't remember for sure if there's a bat or not. So I guess when we get to the clock tower, we'll actually find out for sure if there is a bat in every stage. And I'm thinking there probably is one, but I just can't remember it. I can actually just ignore this enemy there, so let's go on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a bat in the clock tower, but that's a ways off, so we're not even in the castle yet. We're still in a cave in a courtyard, and we have even two stages after this before we get into the castle. Although I want to get into the castle pretty quickly because I think that's when the difficulty of this challenge is really going to ramp up. And in fact, next video I'm going to do two stages, so that will get us right into the castle pretty quickly. And uh, uh, the second stage is pretty short anyways of those two. I guess it'll be stage 5 because I'm on stage 3 now. So two stages would be stage 5. That one's really short. It doesn't even have a boss in it. And I always like these enemies. To smash them down into smaller guys and it has a cool effect there. But it does bring up a point that enemies in Castlevania 4 take a lot of hits to take down. Even normal enemies. So... It's a pretty slow paced action game because of that, but it's a unique kind of Castlevania thing. Like even that little bush took two hits, well, I imagine many other games would take, you know, a few, or, or just one hit, yeah. <laughs> but right here we have something new the game's throwing at us with the rings that you can swing from. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be, I always think they look like, uh... Tommy knockers, door knockers, whatever you call them. But they're just floating rings that you can swing from. And that's going to be interesting, I think, in the leather whip challenge to have such a short whip. There might be some of them I'll have to jump and grab. I'm not sure because I haven't tried this challenge, I've said before, but I'm sure later on there's probably going to be something kind of out of reach of the leather whip that I'll have to jump and grab for. Although I know in this stage there's nothing like that because I do like to practice the stages before I do the recordings here, I, before I actually do the challenge or practice a bit. And from what I remember, there's nothing you actually have to jump and grab. Everything, can, you can just barely hit with the tip of your whip. And I got that last jump in that section. I always thought that was a weird jump. Jumping a little early, not waiting for the mo folks to come. But yeah, the last jump in that, uh, this little part of the level, I always thought was weird. It looks like you can't really make it. But somehow you get it with just the tip of your boot, and you're able to go on. I also want to be careful here not to get the candle because it has a dagger in it, and I'm trying to avoid upgrades and sub weapons for this challenge. And we have more slow paced sections here with the skeletons that take several hits to kill, and I also gotta wait for the upgrade to disappear. Well, that completely, uh, completely missed that fireball. And as long as I don't take any more hits, I should be able to get all my health back before the boss, though, because there was one more piece of meat. And I am allowing myself to get meat in this challenge. Mainly just to speed it up, so I don't... I could probably do it without meat, but if... Well, it would just take longer to actually complete the challenge if I disallow meat and stuff, maybe. Like, I probably won't need it in these early levels, but later on, I think I'll definitely need it. It'll be really useful just to have some meat around. And now we're coming up on the last checkpoint before the boss, so if anything goes wrong, I can just continue from right here. Oh, and I guess I should talk about this club enemy for a bit. All I, all I really want to say is uh, I have no idea what it's supposed to be. It's just a dude with a club, and I always thought he was really weird looking. I can't tell what he's supposed to be at all. It looks like he might have some horns, and... He's just a weird green guy. Like a lot of enemies, I can kind of tell what it's supposed to be. That, that's a bone dragon, and you know, skeletons and bats, and skeletons with swords, and then 
Oh, there's the guy with the club. I have no idea what he is. He's a little odd. Okay. Now I want to take it slow. Because these boats always throw me off guard if I don't even, if I forget about them. Pretty easy to deal with if you just remember the there. Okay, so I want to kill these guys before I get the meat in that candle though in case I take a hit from them. So yeah, that's a good thing since so I did take a hit. Now I got a full health for the boss though. Because from here on, the only thing left is the boss. If I can actually get up some steps here. I think the uh, stairs in Castlevania 4 are kind of infamous for being an easy way to die if you accidentally walk off a cliff instead of walking up the stairs. The trick is just to hold up though, don't hold right at all. Just go where you want to go and uh, press only hold up while on the stairs. So I think I'm going to try and stay on these two blocks here, it seems like the safest spot. It might take a little while, but like I said, I'm going to try to play defensively to get through these bosses and go slow. Which brings up a point, uh, I've heard many times that Castlevania 4 is an easy game to beat, but very difficult to speedrun. Uh, well, I'm not speedrunning it. I just thought I'd mention that as it's something I've heard. I've never watched a Castlevania 4 speedrun, actually. I'd be a little interested in it. Hopefully I can take down the hit that's throwing the three fireballs. Because he's the hard one to deal with since I gotta block his fireballs. Once he's down, I'm not too worried because the other guy has such a short range it doesn't I don't think he can hit you if you stay on these two blocks here. He never really comes close enough to you. But man is it slow. Okay, that takes care of him. I might have to leave these blocks to get this other guy though because he doesn't like to come close to these blocks. He's kind of got a good pattern there where I get one shot in if I actually hit it. Alright, that's one. Really taking my time here. <laughs> that's probably one of the slower bosses as long as you're trying to play really safe anyways. I'm more worried about getting hit and knocked into a hole than actually getting hit enough times to die though. I haven't taken a hit yet, but it only takes one to get knocked into a hole. And there's a hole right behind me. Although I think this is another safe spot to be because if you do get knocked off, you're actually more likely to fall into the two blocks behind you instead of into the pit. Okay, well we got through that no problem. I didn't take a hit. It was just really slow. So that's it for stage 3. I will be doing stage 4 and 5 in the next video and where we finally be in the castle which is where the difficulty is gonna ramp up a bit I think. So thanks for watching. Bye bye!